Hello, all you beautiful creative souls. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a beautiful agate slice piece of art using resin, crystals, rocks, glitter, you name it, all kinds of wonderful sparkly things went into creating this beautiful resin agate slice. I hung it at the top of my staircase and the light hits it and it just glows. It's got a lot of dimension because I put quite a few layers over it. I'm going to show you exactly how I did it and everything you need to create your own agate slice. The last one I did was an amethyst slice and I created it so that you could see the back and the front, but this one, I knew I wanted it to go on the wall, so I only did the front of it, and it's majestic. It's absolutely beautiful, if I do say so myself. Here's the close-up. You can see the quartz crystals sticking out. There's so many different layers. You could stare at it for a very long time. The first thing I did was take a two by four piece of wood and drew out a shape of the agate slice and my husband cut it out. I wanted it to be thicker than the wood was and I wanted a place for the resin to set up. So I took this epoxy and went around the perimeter about an inch high and that way the resin has something to sit in and it makes it a little thicker. Unfortunately, I lost my footage for this first part, but it's okay because I repeat this over and over throughout the video. But I have put the acrylic crystals in and have made the little areas that I'm going to fill and raise up. Now I'm pouring my resin mixed with Nova paints in green pearl, silver pearl, and white. I also mixed resin with mica powders and poured it all on, blow dried it to move it around and I got the shape, let it dry overnight and I took my Posca pens and drew around the different areas. Now I'm taking glitter mixed with resin and pouring it around the different areas that I've mapped out. I'm also filling in with glitter on top of the crystals that are raised up in the center of the different areas and pouring clear resin over to attach that glitter onto the crystals. Now I'm just pouring more crystals and more clear resin over it and putting a little bit of glitter on top of that. I used white glitter and iridescent glitter for this. With the glitter around the edges, as you can see, is gold, silver, black. I just put a lot of white iridescent glitter on top of that area that I'm doing there. And you can see me doing it again here. It just takes the crystals up a notch and makes them more sparkly. Here I'm alternating glitter with clear resin just to make sure that glitter stays down. And I'm also prepping these areas for the quartz crystals that are coming next. So it'll need a lot of resin in between all of the acrylic crystals and all the glitter that I have in all of these areas to hold up the quartz crystals. The quartz crystals are crystal points and they stick straight up. A lot of people hot glue them, but I find this method works better. And I just wedge them in between all the other acrylic crystals that I have with a lot of clear resin. And then this clear resin will push out and become my final top coat. Here I'm putting in the larger quartz crystal points and they'll just sit right in there with the resin. Now I'm attaching the medium sized crystal points onto the little areas 
really makes a difference if you have different size crystal points. You don't want all large ones or all tiny ones. Just again, it just gives it dimension. And now I'm pulling out the smaller ones. Actually, I'm pouring more resin on to make sure that the medium and the large ones stay. And then I'll come in with tweezers and put the smaller ones on. Now I'm taking some small green and dark green and white stones and mix them in with resin and I'm pouring them around all these areas. I just am not thrilled with how the lines look and I want to soften them. I eventually do cover the lines completely with the rocks because I just don't like them. Everybody does it, everybody puts them on there and I tried to save them, but I just didn't like them in the end. And you can see I'm just kind of moving these rocks around that I laid down. And now I'm pouring more clear resin over the rocks that I put down and then I'm going to do my top coat with the clear resin. So I'm pouring it all down and kind of spreading it out here. And I'm continuing to pour more and more clear resin over the rocks but also over the entirety of the piece and this will be my top coat. It just adds another layer, another dimension to look through, to look down onto all the other colors. And it really, it just makes it pop a lot more than just leaving the original layers. Now I'm pouring that clear resin over the whole piece and wanting to pour enough on there to make a thick film on the top so that you can look down into the other colors and it just gives an illusion of the, the sea deep down below. Next, I use my blowtorch to pop any bubbles that might be on the top of that clear resin. And then I switch that out for my blow dryer and I just move the resin around, heat it up, moving around just to make sure it's all even. There aren't any lines anywhere, that every part is even. I definitely used a level to make sure that my substrate was flat. But this just ensures that that top clear coat is moving around and it's level. Now I'm taking this Mona Lisa glue and going to paint all the edges with it where I have that epoxy and where the wood is. So I've got an inch of epoxy and an inch of wood and I need to cover that with this glue so that then I can go in with my silver leaf and leaf it. This glue has to dry for 30 minutes and then it gets tacky and then I can take these sheets of, of silver and lay them on there, it's silver leaf, lay them on there and cover the wood and the epoxy. Once this is done, I can hang my piece on the wall. We used a long strip hanger that you screw into the wall and then you screw the other half onto the piece and then you slide the one piece of metal into the other piece of metal because it weighs about 50 pounds <laughs> it's pretty heavy but i really love the way it turned out and hopefully that gave you a foundation of how you can make an agate or amethyst slice full of crystals and rocks and just that looks like something from a cave or you know it looks like a real geode these are just tips and concepts but you can take this and mix it with any 
any materials you want to use. It really doesn't matter because you're emulating nature and nature doesn't have a perfect form. You can really do whatever you want with these pieces and I think that's why I love them the most. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.